Hello guys and welcome to another exciting video from MedTube. And today's topic is about the first sustained abnormal rhythm called the bradycardias. Now the bradycardias are generally classified into the following. Atrial escape rhythms where the SA node fails to depolarize and the atrial muscles take over as the site of the firing focus. We have the nodal or junctional escape rhythms where the SA node also fails to depolarize and the AV node takes over as the site of the firing focus. And lastly we have the ventricular escape rhythms which is either due to the SA node again failing to de depolarize or due to a complete AV block as we will be seeing shortly. But in order to reach near perfection in the classification here, we could also include two more categories. The first is called sinus bradycardia. Now the sinus, sinus bradycardia still has the SA node as the firing focus, therefore called sinus, but it also but it has a heart rate of less than 60, which is due to either physiologic causes as seen in trained athletes or pathological causes as in hypothyroidism and in certain medications. So sinus bradycardia looks exactly like a normal sinus rhythm, except that the heart rate is less, less than 60 beats per minute. Another category is called heart blocks. Now heart blocks actually got a normal SA node as, this, as the firing focus, but the problem is situated in conduction, therefore, which is usually an AV node and or the bundle of Hiss. Therefore, but, uh, heart blocks will be discussed in another video. Now there are other conditions which could also have bradycardias, but they are less commonly seen. So to be more simple here, we'll just start, stick to the uh, conditions mentioned over here. Great! So our first condition, atrial escape rhythm. Atrial escape rhythm is characterized by the following on an ECG. Abnormal P wave because the, the atria are depolarizing, therefore abnormal P wave as seen in, in the previous videos. We have a normal QRS complex. It is preceded by a pause due to the failure of the SNO to depolarize and the time and until the atria take over as the site of the firing focus there will be a short pause. Heart rate is usually 60 to 80 beats per minute. We have a good example here. Here, From here to, till here we have a normal sinus rhythm. P, QRS, T, everything normal. Suddenly we've got a pause, no P wave. And then we have a peaked P wave, which is the abnormal P wave. So this means the atria are depolarizing here. And then QRS T, normal. And then P, QRS T. So this thing here is called atrial escape rhythm. The atria have taken over. The P waves are all abnormal. And there's a short pause before they have taken over in here. Uh, the heart rate here is about uh, 75 beats per minute, which is characteristic of atrial escape rhythm. Um, so Atrial escape rhythm could have a normal heart rate or slightly bradycardia. A slight bradycardia. Uh, we have nodal, the second category is called nodal or junctional escape rhythms and it's characterized by the following in an ECG. We have an absent P wave. We have, because the, the final focus is in the AV node, we have a normal QRS complex and it's preceded by a pause, exactly like an atrial escape rhythm. Heart rate is about 40 to 60 beats per minute, a bit slower than atria. So here we have a normal sinus rhythm again, and suddenly a pause, nothing happening here, and then absent P wave, and then ECG complex, everything normal here, and then ECG com another ECG complex with absent P wave. So this is called junctional escape rhythm. Heart rate in here is about um, 50 beats per minute um, for in junctional escape rhythm and no P waves. So junctional escape rhythm. The last category is called ventricular escape rhythm. We have either an absent or normal P wave I'll, as we will be seeing why. We have a wide QRS complex. This is the characteristic thing. Therefore it's in red. A wide QRS complex because the ventricles are, are the site of the firing focus. We have abnormal T wave and it's preceded by a pause as in all escape rhythms. Heart rate is about 20 to 40, which is the shortest amongst all uh, uh, escape rhythms. So, ventricular escape rhythm due to failure of SA node to depolarize, as in this ECG here. We have a normal sinus rhythm over here, and then a pause, and then absent P wave, and then white QRS complex, and then another, another beat here with absent P wave and the white QRS complex. So, this is ventricular escape rhythm. Heart rate in here is about uh, 40 beats per minute, which is characteristic of ventricular escape rhythm. 
Now, if the ventricular rhythm occurs due to complete AV block, where the SA node is normal, but the but there is a block, the conduction, we have a normal P wave. Here we have the normal P waves. And the QRS complexes are wide. So here we have complete dissociation between the atria and the ventricles. Therefore, intervals between the P waves are equal, but and between the... Uh, uh, the uh, QRS complexes between the R waves are equal. This is complete AV block. This is another example of ventricular escape rhythm. We have a condition called accelerated is adio in idioventricular rhythm, which is exactly if uh, if the following happens. If the ventricular escape rhythm occurs at a rate of 60 to 100, we call accelerated idioventricular rhythm. It is exactly like ventricular escape rhythm on ECG, the same characteristics. Um, no P waves, um, wide QRS, inverted T wave, abnormal T wave. Uh, so, But the difference is the heart rate. It's about 60 to 100. Some people commonly refer to as a slow ventricular tachycardia because if it occurs at a heart rate of above uh, about 120, it will be called ventricular tachycardia. So actually, they're all a continuum of the same condition. The ventricles are taking over as the site of the firing focus due to failure of the SA node, usually. And if it occurs at a heart, heart rate of a 60 to 100, it's called accelerated atrial ventricular rhythm. So this is not a bradycardia, but I've just put, put it here to make it clear for everyone. It's usually seen after perfusion, post-thrombolytic therapy, and acute myocardial infarction, and no treatment is needed. So this is all about bradycardias. And we will see you next in the next video with heart blocks.